everybody, and welcome to a, another installment of North Central PA Comic Book Club. <laughs> uh, today, we are talking about uh, the saga compendium. Brett recommended to me this tome. This 54 issues, the first 54 issues of Saga before they went on a break. Uh, this has been a real thrill to catch up on. Uh, and I, because like I only read like the first arc and then I had to go to when it first came out and then I fell off. But yeah, catching up on this has been great. And then uh, I recommended uh, Southern Bastards. I was only going to recommend Volume 1, but Brett loved the series so much he went ahead and bought the whole thing and, it, <laughs> and has now read more of Southern Bastards than I have. So. <laughs> So that's what we got. Uh, I also will be talking about the uh, the, the new Monsters movie uh, directed by uh, Rob Zombie for our pop culture Who Nanny and a couple other movies I saw in theaters. Uh, the Woman King, Don't Worry Darling, and See How They Run. Uh, we will also have a review of the new Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman uh, comic uh, Vanish, which I got a chance to read. And Brett will be taking a look at uh, the most recent issue of Predator and talking a little bit more about Gunslinger Spawn, as Brett is wont to do. <laughs> also, we got to get some interviews on these. Hopefully, Scranton Comic Con will be able to yeah. will be able to bank some. That's yeah. that's my promise. That's not my promise. That's my <laughs> I would like to to you, yeah. the viewer. Um, but yeah, so let's get into uh, the comics discussion. What do you want to talk about first, uh, Saga or Southern Bastards? Your pick. Uh, let's go Southern Bastards. We were kind of talking about it already. Yeah. Um, I love this series. I thought the first three volumes were absolutely fantastic. Um, I guess we can cover it based off of spoilers. We might give some things away. I'll try not to give too much away. Um, the first three volumes, I guess, of this, I thought were outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fun way to kick off the high school football season, even though it yeah. doesn't it involves high school football. So well, it's nominally it's a criminal <laughs> <of> enterprise run <laughs> yeah. by the high school football yeah. um, team. It, it kind of takes whatever you think of a small town high school football team and the power their coaches possess to a completely different level that involves a criminal enterprise. Um, it involves a, an old time football player coming back. The backstories of some of the coaches and how they got in there, race relations in the South. Um, the artwork is fantastic. Yeah, Jason the story looks more is good. It. Yeah. Um, my only complaint is it needs a fifth volume. The story really, it really sped up at the end, and I feel like it sped up not in a good way. It started to get feel very forced and that they were trying to get to this ending that they 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 promised through these first three issues to deliver but i think a fifth volume would go a long way we were promised a fifth volume yeah. at the end of the fourth one so we'll see, see. yeah <laughs> and, and i i think a lot of that uh, might have to do with uh, by the way the book is written by jason aaron and the art is done by jason latour and i think a lot of the reason why they haven't gotten around to doing that fifth volume and why it might have um sped up a lot is jason latour around the, the time that this was getting to like, like it was started to get a lot more work as a writer. Um, and I, I just feel like they might not have gotten a chance to come back to it. And I really hope they do, because uh, I, I have not read the fourth volume yet. I, yet I have only read up through volume three, but man, it is everything Brett said. Like a coach boss is one of the most mm -hmm. complex Machiavellian villains like around, he's like, manipulative and evil but there's like a, an element of sympathy that you have towards him for like this miserable life that he's led it's a really phenomenal book well no and you will at the end of volume one if you're reading it and paying attention um you'll think coach boss at the end of volume one is just the worst human being alive and then by the end of volume two they give you his backstory, and all of a sudden, it's like Jeremy said, you start to look at him in a completely different light, and it almost flips the entire story on its head. Mm -hmm. It's really a clever way they did with storytelling, and, and I do. I, I like a lot of the characters. It feels, the dialogue feels real. Yeah. Yeah. And it always finds a way to keep you off your feet. Like, with the first volume, you think your, 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 your main character, or your protagonist is going to be one person, and then it, mm -hmm. boom, at the end, it's... Which switches the script on you, and, and it's really surprising in a lot of fun and interesting ways, and it definitely keeps you guessing and keeps you going and engaged. I, I love Southern Bastards. I think it's one of the best 
uh, independent comics to come out of the last like 10 years. Yeah, I agree. And and the cool thing about this, and I bought these all new at Isle of Comics for 10 bucks, but when we were at the Wellsboro Comic Con, you can find used copies as low as, I mean, $5. Yeah, you can get the singles. Get yeah, the, they're yeah, pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, even the, the trades were like $5. Oh, so yeah. you can get the probably the whole collection for maybe 20 bucks online. Or I know they have them over at Isle of Comics if you want to get them. I over also there, so. I think they did two volumes of like uh, of nice hardcover sets, but those yeah. are those are obviously a little bit pricey. Yeah. But if you want to get like a fancy oversized hardcover, they do also have that option. And I, I think Image does a really nice job with packaging those. Yeah, and I do think it's a series that you're gonna. Um, I mean, I just got done with them. I, I I reread while I was reading. I would go back and read some parts for for clarification and stuff. But it's definitely one that you're probably going to go through and read a few times. Um, I know I'd be I'm gonna be anxious to get back into it when we uh, when I get a chance Okay, so is that all we have to say That's about all we have go yeah. read Southern Bastards. Yes that, uh, <laughs> So and I will eventually read that fourth volume. So let's talk about uh, this this phone book uh, this murder device uh, the saga compendium number one um, By the way before we even get into into talking about the book I just want to, like, these are really great prices. Like, oh my God. You can pick yeah. these up on like yep. Amazon for like 40 bucks usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, the cover price on this is like, is 60, but like even that, it's still like a dollar a book. Yeah, I, I got it from Isla Comic for 40 bucks. So yeah. if, you, if you do maybe a little haggling and stuff, it, yeah, and and like you said with the Southern Bastards one, Image does a, a great job with these. Yeah, and, and, super and, durable. and and yeah, for despite how many pages this is, I think this is like fifteen hundred pages. It, it fe thirteen hundred pages. It feels like It feels like it's not going to fall apart in your mm -hmm. hand. Yeah, yeah, it's something you can hold up and kind of flip through. And yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a nice quality book uh, for how many pages it has, and you get a ton of just a ton of issues for what you're paying. Yeah. But anyways, let's talk about the book. So Saga is uh, follows the story of Marco and Alana, two um, uh, members of warring civilizations. One, uh, one from the moon, Marco, is a magic-based people, and the other uh, from the planetoid that uh, the moon orbits, uh, Landfall, uh, Alana, is more of like a science tech-based kind of culture. Mm -hmm. And they've been at war for centuries, and they've kind of... Now the war doesn't really get fought on either of their home places, it's now exported out. And on one of these planets, Alana and Marco meet as Marco is a POW, and they end up falling in love and having a, uh, a baby named Hazel. And it's about the, uh, and the book is kind of about the trials and tribulations of, uh, of raising a, a, a little girl while you are uh, being chased by every major entity in the universe. Yeah, and the genius of the story here is that the narrator is born yes. literally on the first page and she's telling the story mm -hmm. so you know she must make it and she even makes jokes about it at times. I think there's a really good one in the new, the new block of issues that just came out where they really kind of she's in danger and makes a point of saying but don't worry you know i survived this part. Yeah, yeah so it's really kind of a clever narration tool that they use yeah but i mean that's not to say that there's there's no stakes because there are tons oh. of like really great characters that like you'll see like and they'll like show up for a few issues and then tragically they are gone yeah this is a kind of it's not a Game of Thrones like story but it's a Game of Thrones kind of story in a sense that all characters can die there's one that you know is safe but everybody else and I again without giving things away you know that this compendium ends on a major major cliffhanger featuring one of the characters so, yeah well maybe not a cliffhanger but you know what I'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. before they took their what three-year hiatus yeah yeah, uh, yeah are they still on another hiatus they or are, are they finally okay, yeah, okay. They, so we, we had um, when it came back out in January, it was a six month or a six yeah six month run six issue what they called a mini series and they're going to be on a little break now. Um, but overall, what's really funny about the story is what how great it can poke fun at itself because it yeah. kind of the way Jeremy described it was perfect. So I felt like it kind of had a Romeo and Juliet yes. vibe, but then they throw in this trashy romance novel and kind of say, yeah. no, we are not, we are not Romeo and Juliet. We are a 
trashy But also romance the romance novel, novel is, is maybe, there's maybe more to it, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Like, but when they meet the, that's another yeah, when great they meet part. The, when the they fantastic meet the, author, the author, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the, the, the characters are so fantastic yeah. in this. I feel like I have, uh, I have no clue how, by the way, I'm going to show you uh, many images during this video, put up any pages. It's, uh, it's kind of explicit. <laughs> yeah, if you saw the first run of the comic book column, you know how difficult we, we had trying to show pictures from this yeah. comic book. I unfortunately flipped the one page that was a whole page that you shouldn't see. Um, but needless to say, this oh, is an adult comic yes, book. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's deliberately over the adult, over the top an adult comic book. So. Southern Bastards is also adult, but let's uh, let's say less uh, the sexually explicit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that I'll have I'll have an easier time finding images for that one to share. And so I will say a funny little <laughs> nugget about this is so I've I've read I read an interview with Brian K. Vaughn where yeah, he the writer. he said yeah the writer of it and so he specifically said. Fiona Staples and him agreed that they wanted to put these graphic sex scenes in this comic book because one thing they don't ever want this comic book to be is adapted to a movie or a television show. So they deliberately put this stuff in here, but you've been warned. It doesn't yeah. take away from the story or anything, but it is a it is an adult comic book. And also talking about Fiona Staples, her art is just incredible. It's like incredibly, uh, like it's, it's nice, easy efficient storytelling mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but her design work and the way her her stuff looks it's like it's it i can only compare it to like hayao miyazaki in a lot yeah. of ways like yeah. she 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 has a visual sense and and specifically a design sensibility that that really uh hits in line with uh miyazaki except she doesn't seem as uh, miserable or obsessed with planes <laughs> um so there is that uh, I, I, I <laughs> well, and it's it's fun too because the characters they they created. Brian yeah. K. Vaughn does such a good job with the dialogue. They're very believable, even though the characters don't look believable. I think that might be the best way to describe it. I mean, we have characters a that lot have of, yeah. television screens as faces. Yes, yes. So yeah, <laughs> but you still <laughs> buy into all of their. That's what makes it great. all of their. Yeah, it's yeah. like. As ridiculous as a lot of the stuff you're, 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 is being visually represented, it's all grounded in a very real emotion. And mm -hmm. both Staples, through her art, who who, who has phenomenal phenomenal character action, mm -hmm. acting uh, from her from her figures, is it's it, it, it all grounds it in, in a very real emotional understanding place. Um, whilst also uh, being about the larger nature of long form storytelling mm -hmm. it's, it's also kind of a deconstruction in that way with the way it's it's structured and, and, and the way like it's 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 told like a storybook through the captions yeah. like yeah. which is which yep. is very interesting it's 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 like a, it's like a space opera fairy tale yeah and I, i'll say so i think 66 is that don't hold me that but i think 66 is the new issue that it came out mm -hmm. to i cried i i at the end of that issue it is there's such a big part emotionally for one of the characters that you get to see happen that oh my gosh even thinking about it it just it was a it's just so well done and i know it's one of those comic books that everybody talks about and everybody says it's great but there is a reason people say it. it it's as good as advertised it's it's a fun read yeah yeah so uh do you want to move on to our pull box then yeah, let's do it. Uh, do you want me to just do the one book I have real quick, or do you want to... Yeah, wanna... no, let's do this, because I, I I haven't read this one, but I would def I definitely have input on yeah. these two. Oh, also, uh, just to mention, we kind of talked about it, but uh, Brian K. Vaughn is the writer, and Fiona Staples is the artist on, on Saga. You Two books you should definitely go read, Southern Bastards and Saga. Um, both by Image. Yes, both are out by Image Comics. Another Image book is the reteaming of Donny Cates, uh, and Ryan Stegman, who haven't uh, teamed since uh, The King in Black. Mm -hmm. um, I, now, I never read their Venom run, but uh, I uh, picked up this first issue because I knew we were definitely going to want to talk about it. Um, and this is a love letter to 90s image comics like I have not seen in quite a while. Like, Ryan Stegman has kind of evolved his style in such a way that he's really reminiscent of, like, a Greg Capullo or a Joe Maduera, like kind of like a mid-ground between them. And it has big, violent, blood-soaked action in this. And, and the setup's pretty simple. It's about uh, a magical realm outside of 
America, or outside of the real world. I don't know why I said America, like America's the only <laughs> real world. But, <laughs> yeah, England. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't care about your queen. <laughs> uh, anyways, so um, outside of the outside of the real world, and they um, and there's this guy that shows up, and then at age fourteen, the main character uh, he kills this guy, and he's the chosen one. But then his co the guy that he murders, his cohorts leave. But then thirty years later, they come back pretending to be superheroes, kind of like the boys. Like the mm. the superheroes are the bad guys. And then at the end of this issue, it sets it up like this guy's going to be play the hero or play the villain while taking out the guys pretending to be the wizards pretending to be superheroes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't it it. it it took a while. Again, it didn't get to the to the actual setup until the last page of this issue, which kind of frustrated me. Um, but I, I definitely am intrigued, and I want to read more. And I think the I think Ryan Stegman is killing it in in the in the art front. Yeah, I mean, I so I'll I'll be honest. I haven't read this one yet, but um, Donny Cates and uh, Stegman's run with Venom, and then. Um, the Carnage run, the Absolute Carnage run, and the King in Black run mm -hmm. are some of my favorite runs ever in Marvel. I think it's it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm excited to get into this one. I don't know if Donny Cates can write a bad comic book. Um, I read his Hulk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know if the man can write a bad comic book. I guess <laughs> we can dare him to try. But yeah. We'll see how this one turns out. It's early on in the process, but hopefully I'll be able to get this one in next month. And yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have a further discussion. Review. Hopefully yeah. issue two is out then too, so we can, yeah. we can also talk about that one. So uh, do you want to talk about Gunslinger's Long and Predator then? Yeah, so we talked about, so I, I'm, I'm a sucker right now for the Predator uh, covers and the variant covers. Um, I typically don't like to do this, especially with the Marvel comics, because the quality is is not there. But the the covers are absolutely beautiful. Um, this story is just really good. I mean, I know we're early on into it, but I like the Alien and Predator comics, and I know this might sound counterintuitive to reading them or something, but I like the ones where we don't see the aliens or the predators until right at the end. I think it does a really good job of building things up. We get more of the backstory of the protagonist, but then we kind of get a cliffhanger at the end featuring a first appearance by a predator in mm. this issue. And it's really cool how they do it. I, I, I like that approach. I like the idea of the story about a hunter a person whose family was wiped out by predators and now she's hunting them. I think the story's here and I'm I'm really happy through two issues. As somebody that this franchise means a lot to yeah. through the Dark Horse days, I'm I'm really pumped about what Marvel's done with this. So far. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had a chance to read Predator 2, but it's 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 pretty close to the top of my pull list, hoping I can get to it uh before the end of the week. Mm -hmm. And the next one I bring up, we talked about last week. Um, but actually, these two issues, if you get a chance to get 11 and 12 of Gunslinger Spawn, you're probably going to hop into a story that you might not know exactly what's going on. But the way this story builds and leaves a cliffhanger at the end of 11 and then pulls you into 12 and shows you what happens is really, really cool. I think this series has... Uh, Javier is the lead uh, Spawn. Uh, to give you a, a quick run, he was pulled in... Um, when Spawn, Spawn closed uh, Hell, and then what happened was it pulled in all these different people from different timelines. Javier Gunslinger Spawn was pulled in, and this is kind of telling his story about living in the world with other Hell Spawns, and I think they've done a really good job. I think all the Spawns have, but this one in particular is, is really standing out. They bring back other characters from the first few issues back into mm -hmm. this, so it's cool that you're getting to see the full story. Plus, it's one year in. Yeah. <laughs> so man. that's what's kind of cool. We got there our 12th issue, and Image is continuing to pump it out. So, um, if you yeah, McFarlane, chance... McFarlane, McFarlane has been pretty good at actually getting strips in because there was a while there where he uh, kind of almost solely focused on the toys and was very bad at getting issues out on time. Yeah. And what's cool about this is, again, because Image Comics are better price than Marvel Comics. This is 10 bucks. This will get you the first six issues to get you set up, and then you can kind of wait maybe till the next trade comes out mm -hmm. or get your next six Which issues. Which should be coming out. They're pretty quick at also turning out their trades. They yeah. are, yeah. Yep. 
So uh, after so that's all the new books we have to discuss. Let's uh, get on to the pop culture hoot nanny, bada bop chew, uh, <laughs> where I, I will uh, talk about uh, some of the movies that I, I went to go see this weekend in in theaters, uh, and made myself sick there, uh, <laughs> because uh, when it turns out that when you spend an entire day in a movie theater and you do nothing but uh, eat uh, popcorn and drink soda, your stomach might not agree with you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so on Sunday, I went to go see Don't Worry Darling, uh, uh, The Woman King, and see how they run. Don't Worry Darling is, is uh, Olivia Wilde's new movie. It's her follow-up to Booksmart. Um, it's uh, like a, a, a Twilight Zone episode that will not end and takes two hours to get to its twist. And then by the, the time you get to the twist, you're just like, what? So fucking stupid. So, <laughs> Sorry for the cussing. <laughs> Very dumb. Bad movie, did not like, don't recommend. <laughs> now, The Woman King, that movie about wow. the Agoji uh, rules Viola Davis, murders a bunch of dudes with swords. More movies should be about Viola Davis murdering people with swords. <laughs> uh, great stuff, had a lot of fun with that. Uh, see how they run, it's kind of like, it's a British murder mystery, it's, it's like, Knives Out by by way of Wes Anderson. It gets a little too cute for its own good, but it's fun. Sam Rockwell's good in it. Um, uh, and uh, on streaming, uh, I caught uh, Rob Zombie's new uh, Monsters movie. <laughs> I, uh, I want to see this one. It, it's it's on Netflix. Okay. So give me and um, and please do because we will we'll, we'll we'll catch up on this one in okay. October then <laughs> because because I thought it was kind of a hoot. And was really silly, and 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 like was doing something with its limited budget, that as as a fun little homage to sitcoms, and uh, my girlfriend hated it, oh, was miserable the whole time. <laughs> but I, I thought it was I, I thought it was fun. I, I recommend it. Like uh, you know, uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips is, is is given a is given a really fun performance as Herman Munster. Everybody's playing multiple characters, so that's also a bit silly. <laughs> Um, anyways, so that's uh, all, uh, all I have. Do you have uh, any, anything non-comic related to talk about? Um, no, I mean, I guess we're getting ready for October. Yeah. Um, so we're going to start talking Halloween stuff. Um, my video games, I guess we talk about these every once in a while. I'm, I can't pull myself away from Elden Ring, so I don't have a new game to talk about. Mm. I'm going to start Horizon Forbidden West, so I'll have a review out about that. My October game I recommend is Bloodborne. I know it's a 2015 game, but go back and play it if you haven't. It's amazing. Um, outside of that, we got some awesome comic books that we're going to talk about for October that are going to be kind of Halloween themed. Yeah, yeah, we're going to try and keep it a little bit spooky. And uh, we'll check back in with the monsters after Brett watches yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Talking about some children's horror film. <laughs> I got a horror. Oh, Count Orlock. He has—he shows everybody a bunch of pictures of his rats. I've, I felt seen. Okay, awesome. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, I'm Jeremy Stout, and if you want to talk about uh, comics or anything else in the world of pop culture, you can email me at jeremy s at northcentralpa.com. And for Brett, I'm Brett C at northcentralpa.com. And don't forget, if you need comic books, go over to Kyle Comics in South Williamsport. They'll hook you up. Sounds good. See ya. At UPMC, we're pioneering new ways to treat cancer, and we're working to prevent it. We're advancing new technology to look more closely at disease and helping you breathe easier. We perform the world's first heart liver transplant, and we're experts at keeping your heart beating strong. We're a global team of more than 90,000, advancing care everywhere and delivering it closer to you. UPMC, life-changing medicine.